Hugging is an integral part of most cultures and societies worldwide. Animals too do hug each other. You probably use hugs to express your love for family and friends. But why do we hug each other? And why sometimes does it feel so magical? Humans need social contacts such as friendly hugs, pats on the back, and hand holding. Hugs, in particular, vastly contribute to your health and happiness. In fact, hugs are proven so important that National Hugging Day is observed annually on January 21st, making it an opportune time to start hugging more for your health and happiness. The physical squishing effect of a hug relaxes the muscles and relieves tension, much like the after effects of a massage. According to several studies, people who hugged a partner daily found a reduced blood pressure and decreased level of cortisol, a hormone released in response to stress. The average hug lasts just three seconds, but 20 seconds is the ideal length of time for an embrace. The reason is that the pressure of a good snuggle gets the oxytocin flowing. Oxytocin, the so-called love drug, is one of the most powerful neurotransmitters in our brain. It's a quite unique chemical compound that can only be found in mammals and requires specific stimulating techniques in order to be released naturally. One of these incredibly simple techniques is hugging. Oxytocin is the bonding hormone that allows you to establish a deep connection with others. It calms your nervous system and boosts positive emotions. One study found that women recorded greater reductions in blood pressure than men after hugging with their partners. They also had lower levels of the stress hormone, cortisol. Men produce 10 times the amount of testosterone than women do, which is fine except that testosterone inhibits oxytocin. That may partially explain why many men hug less than women. In man's reluctance to hug, they increase their stress, the risk of cardio problems, and are probably reducing their longevity. That could be one of the reasons why, on average, men have a shorter lifespan than women. But just before you go outside and hug strangers, you should know that the positive effects only occur if the people trust each other. If people do not know each other, or if the hug is not desired by both parties, its effects are lost. When we receive unwanted hugs from strangers, or even people we know, the hormone is not released and anxiety levels rise. People would only have a beneficial effect if everyone involved is clear that it is just a harmless bit of fun. Otherwise, it could be perceived as an emotional burden and stress. So now we know hugging friends and family is good for you. But what if you came home from work and there is nobody around you to hug? Does playing with your pet bring you a sense of happiness as well? Researchers found that when owners played with their dogs for 30 minutes, their blood pressure decreased, while researchers also saw increased levels for oxytocin and beta endorphins. The latter promotes pain relief and the sense of euphoria. But now things are getting weirder. According to researchers at the 2010 World Forestry Congress, hugging a tree multiplies natural cancer killer cells. It also improves our mood and provides natural healing effects. Another research suggests that tree hugging can improve many health issues such as ADHD, depression, headaches, and concentration levels. It also improves cognitive and emotional abilities and creativity. But that's not all. Another study suggests we can reduce physical pain by hugging ourselves. The researchers suspect that when we cross our arms in front of ourselves, this confuses the brain when processing tactile stimulation. Scientists suggest that you need to experience at least eight hugs a day in order to feel happier and more content with life. So look around and find someone to share a long hug with. Don't count, just enjoy. Hello and welcome to Mom Talk. Um, دوستان به برنامه مادر و کودک خوش آمدید در برنامه امروز در رابطه با به صلاح این ماه ژانویه که همه برگشتیم در سال 2017 و میخوایم که انسانهایی بهتر با کمال بیشتر و تکاملی بهتر باشیم داشته باشیم برای خودمون و خانواده فکر کردم که موقع خوبی هستش چون در ماه ژانویه National Hugging Day هستش اینجا در کشور آمریکا و شاید شما میتونین در ایران این رو شروع بکنین یک روز رو انتخاب میکنن 21 ژانویه که همه همدیگر رو در آغوش بغل میکنن یا نه همه شاید اون کسانی که به همدیگه محبت دارن یا همدیگر رو دوست دارن و به همدیگه علاقه دارن همدیگر رو در آغوش میگیرن و برای همدیگه به صلاح آرزوی خوبی و به صلاح دوستی میکنن نشنال هاگینگ دی جنوری 21 
امروز it's an honor it's my pleasure to have Mr. Rick Morrison the author of the hug store ایشون نویسنده در کنار دخترشون شانا که یک روزی امیدوار هستم اینجا به مام تاک بیاد و گست من باشه شانا و ریک مورسن این کتاب رو کتاب کودکان رو با هم دیگه نوشتن و امروز در رابطه با قصه این کتاب بسیار بسیار مفید و اون چه که شما رو در رابطه با خوندن و به صلاح کتاب خانی به فرزندانتون کمک میکنه به مرحله پیس لرنینگ به اینکه سوشال ایموشنال انتلیجنس رو در کودکانتون و در خانواده ارتقا بدین و میدونم این از شاید اون نیورز رزولوشن ها یا اون توجه هایی باشه که شاید بخواین با خودتون در خانواده داشته باشین بسیار بسیار مفید هستش حتما کتاب رو بگیرین وبسایتشون به زودی شروع به به صلاح کار کردن خواهد شد و اگر به فیسبوک پیج ایشون برین که تایتل هست The Hug Store روی فیسبوک میتونین این کتاب رو بگیرین و با نویسنده این کتاب که امروز مهمان عزیز برنامه مادر و کودک هستن در تماس باشین ریک مورسن it's an honor it's a pleasure to have you on mom talk thank you Nelly yeah. great to be here oh awesome so let's talk about your um, book with your beautiful daughter your lovely daughter I already I'm in love with her just looking at this one <laughs> she's so sweet and kind um, so Shana and you decided to write this book why tell us the story yeah and when you meet her she will hug you before she even says hello to you um, she I and I have been working on this book for almost two years um, we started it when she was four years old and it was actually inspired by a true story that that happened to her Um, in, in myself when we were visiting family back uh, in Michigan where we uh, where I grew up and the hug store was was really just this you know she the grandfather my dad wanted a hug and, and Shauna wasn't going to give up the hug and uh, he kept asking for the hug and she she said you know grandpa I'm all out I have to go to the store. I'll bring you back one. And it was her way of like kind of postponing a moment that she wasn't really comfortable giving him a hug. And it was kind of a nice way to, to let him down in a creative way. Mm -hmm. And I think it, it, it took us all by like, you know, a little bit of shock. Like what an interesting thing to say um, instead of just like no or something. Yeah. Um, but that was it. I never thought of a book, never thought of anything. And then uh, a few months later in a yoga class, mm -hmm. I had this idea and it kind of came to me and I knew something about my yoga teacher that uh, he, had, he had done some, some work as a, um, a child author or you know, writing books for uh, children, but I didn't realize he was actually a publisher. So in, in, in a sense, in the yoga class, this whole thing kind of manifested and we decided to do this book um, about looking for hugs. and. And Sean and I started writing it, and we, you know, back up to that one more thing. Yeah. We, we had started the idea of it with writing, with it not being like a, a finished out there book. It would be more something internal, kind of like an heirloom for our family. And that Sean, she said she wanted to read to her kids to teach them about hugging one day. So that was like the original, original plan. And then when we got to the publishing, end of it, we realized, wow, the story really touches every family and all children. So, you know, why not uh, actually have this out there? So that was the, the story behind the story. Um, Let me take a moment because yeah. this is such a beautiful moment right now. Um, so for those of you who are with us, um, we're talking about uh, Rick Morrison and Shauna Morrison, their journey in conscious parenting and how they um, came to the point of manifesting the, the story, this narrative approach, so that the story of a hug and how you hug and share a hug within the family. So this is her story, her inspiration from her relationship with grandpa. How this opens up this whole dialogue, this narrative about what what's a hug, how do we hug, the importance of hugs, 
and so forth. So, برای شما دوستان شاید کوچولوایی دارین که بعضی از اوقات راحت نیستن که پدر بزرگ رو یا فامیل رو در آغوش بگیرن و بغل بکنن. من این بچه ها رو دائم در مهمانی ها میبینم. بچه هایی که میگن یکی میاد بغلشون بکنه و میگن نه 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 من بغل نمیخوام. من خودم یکی از اون بچه ها بودم چون از آمریکا به ایران اومده بودم. یادمه که مادر بزرگم اولین بار که اومد منو بغل بکنه آمادگیشو نداشتم. کامفتبل نبودم برای اینکه اون رو نمیشناختم اونقدر. برای همین شانا در سن چهار سالگی she was four years old yeah. در سن چهار سالگی اون به صلاح این awareness این consciousness این به صلاح creativity رو این خلاقیت رو در ذهنش داره که به جای اینکه به پدر بزرگش بگه نو 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 نمیخوام الان هاگت بکنم به جاش میگه که پاپا گرامپا من الان هاگ ندارم من out of hugs هاگ تو در درونم هاگ ندارم بذار برم مغازه بذار برم یه جایی ببینم میتونم پیدا کنم هاگو و اون موقع که پیدا کردم برمیگردم و I'll give you a hug بنابراین نه تنها این هوش عاطفی و هوشی که در ذهنش هست این هوش رو داشته که پدر بزرگ و قلبش رو نشکونه و نگه نه به جاش بگه که wait let's not yet خب یه پاز بکنه و بعد در این فکرش در خلاقیتش she goes on this journey to the hug store <laughs> and the story is created this beautiful story is created um, and so tell us about what happens on this right. journey so, to the hug store so in, in writing it, yeah. um, in it it's really in her authentic voice mm-hmm. which is mostly when she was five years old but of trying to figure out where she would shop for hugs. Mm. And so I was like, what stores? So we picked the stores that she was familiar with mm-hmm. um, and uh, you know, pet stores and music stores <laughs> yeah. and toy stores. And, and she, everywhere she looked, she would be disappointed because she didn't see the hugs there. Mm-hmm. And she was always looking outside of herself, realizing that all along she knew that they were inside, mm-hmm. but she had to look outside to look inside. Right. And once she realized that um, she wasn't going to find them, you know, she ultimately comes to find them um, within herself. But the idea with, mm-hmm. with the, the store is that so much, especially in this day and age, mm-hmm. you know, the way we've all been brought up is that, you know, we're looking outside us for everything. Mm-hmm. And, you know, consumerism and the way advertisers and the media works on and spinning everything and having us drink the Kool-Aid mm-hmm. is like, you know, it's just so easy to look outside. Um, it takes a little bit more, you know, wisdom and, and, you know, to look inside. But once you do, you just realize that it's all there and then everything else comes to you anyways. It's all... And not only that, I think the way you've integrated this beautiful story and how you have... Um, talked about the common interests, the family. You, you, I, I wish I could show some of these photos. So this, this is the first photo. Uh, I hope you can see it. If not, uh, get this book, you all. This is beautiful. This is a great bedtime story. Go to the Facebook page, The Hug Store, and get this book. It's wonderful. Tamam khanewade inja nishastan ke in etifaq in the Iranian American or Iranian families, this happens a lot. You know, we get together with the whole extended family. So this is very familiar <laughs> to many of us. Pedar bozorg, madar bozorg, amme, khale, dai, va kazena. اینا همه در کنار هم نشستن و نشون میده که شانا با فاملیش با خانوادهش چقدر اوقات خوبی رو میگذرونه با هم دیگه چقدر خوشن بعد در صفحه بعد که میاین اینجا پدر بزرگ رو نشون میده که پدر بزرگ داره مثلا میخواد بره بیرون و این برک های پاییزی رو به صلاح جمعوری بکنه و سوال میکنه که کی دوست داره با من بره در بیرون در حیات و این برک ها رو جمعوری بکنن و میبینین که شانا دستش رو بلند میکنه و میگه من 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 آماده هستم بنابراین she's curious she's a helper so this is saying a lot about you know she's, she's expressing who she is her personality her wanting to join grandpa to go and pick up some autumn leaves and the the dog who's uh, right there <laughs> and well integrated into i mean this is all a lot of 
social, emotional intelligence and health and mental health. And, you know, it's wonderful. So you, you're, the message is integrated in the story as well as the illustration is um, really a great opportunity to talk about what's real, what's important, yes. and what matters. Yes. You know, this is peace learning right here. And her being able to set a boundary, having a creative mind, having the creativity and not being afraid, having the courage to say it. Yes. Because I was just sharing with the audience when I first um, went back to Iran when I was six, uh, a lot of family members wanted to hug me and I wasn't ready. And But I uh, wasn't as clever as Shana, so I just kept saying no. <laughs> I just put my hand up and I said no until I was ready. But she has this um, gentility, you know, the softness. And she says, well, Grandpa, you know, just wait. Like, I'm, I'm going to go to the store and I'm going to look for it. And then you go on this beautiful journey to really go look for it, right? So I think with all the places that she goes and the different individual, like different family members, right? I love that that it's not just you or mom, right? It's everyone. It's everyone's integrated in the story, and so I'm not going to give it away. You have to get the book to read the rest, but it's just fantastic. And she. Um, is so soft-hearted, warm-hearted. She has such wonderful interests that a lot of you um, girls or boys would relate to. It's a beautiful story, and just you have to get the book to read it. Okay, but let's talk about how then um, you two decided to get into the research, sort of the back, the benefits of hugging. Yeah. 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 So the benefits of hugging came as really an important counterpart to the story because. You know, so much of what we know and read is, is based on, you know, Western medicine and research and, and everything. And so we, you know, I just know even in talking to my own family, they send me articles on mm -hmm. things like that. So people, you know, really uh, trust what they read and research. Mm -hmm. And I thought that would be a really nice component to, to really bring the message full circle. Because yeah. we could sit and talk about it. But once there's actual research done, um, it's a lot more tangible. People believe sure. in things that they can see and touch mm -hmm. and feel. Mm -hmm. and uh, when, Scientific. Yeah. yeah, when we sent out um, for some endorsements, mm -hmm. which we got back powerful endorsements and more than we actually even thought we had to mm -hmm. go to an overflow page. Mm -hmm. We were so grateful for all those. Uh, one of the first people um, was Tiffany Field um, at the Touch Institute in, in uh, University of Miami. Wonderful. And amazing. She, I mean, within 30 seconds of getting the email, she responded, yes, we can't wait to endorse. Uh, but it's the first global research facility dedicated to the study of human touch mm -hmm. and how powerful it is. And with those type of endorsements, we just realized, you know what, this is more than just the story. This is, this is who we are. Mm -hmm. And if we bring this more into our lives, we all heal because of it. Mm -hmm. We all, you know, everybody wins. Yeah. You know, when somebody who's giving the hug, you know, is winning just as much as the person who's getting the hug. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all, you know, it's all one big, you know, give and take mm -hmm. the way really, you know, life is. And uh, so that was the idea behind the research mm -hmm. part of it. Mm -hmm. um, I also wanted to make sure that the people, when, 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 especially since we're catering the book to children mm -hmm. between you know roughly three and eight, that there was some safety, um, you know, involved in it uh, because there's little kids who will hug anybody, mm -hmm. and it's great because I really think that's their authentic nature. They're hugging who they, you know, who they. They're just, they're born to hug. We're, we're a born to hug species until we're suppressed. You and, were telling me about yeah. the little girl who hugged this stranger and was able to change, turn his life around because um, she gave him hope. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And she yeah. literally changed the tra uh, trajectory of, of his life, gave him something to live for mm -hmm. because of this little girl's, you know, innocence and just wanting to hug for no other reason than just to hug him because she thought he looked sad. Mm -hmm. And you know, the fact that she's that intuitive, I mean, kids are so intuitive. If we just follow their lead, they're gonna lead us in the right direction too. Mm -hmm. um, so this journey in, in looking for the, uh, the hug store, but also the journey in writing it has made me listen to my daughter more and see her mm -hmm. for who she is because there is so much authenticity in children that it's all there, and, and they're great huggers. I mean, they're they're amazing. Um, I couldn't agree with you more. It, yeah, yeah it, it's very powerful when when you um, either connect um, interpersonally <clears throat> or 
even um, intuitively, I think there's a special moment in the hug or approaching a hug when you know that the other person knows that you know that they know that you know <laughs> that you care. Yes. Right? It's about the yeah. caring, being kind, having compassion. And in that moment, something magical happens. Uh, it could be biochemically, you know, they talk about, the research talks about oxytocin and, you know, that, the, that there is uh, the biochemical factor. But I think there is also a very soulful uh, element to it. Right. You know, that the souls connect. Right. And they connect when they touch. And there is that uh, knowing, the intuitive knowing. And it's very empowering. I think um, allowing children to develop in their authentic self and uh, in a space where there's a lot of that consciousness awareness mm -hmm. that this is important to give it value and also educate them. I think the peace learning could be educating them about healthy boundaries. You know, the, the, the red flags or what, what feels right and what's not. And then beyond that, allowing them to have experiences so that they can uh, learn and be resilient in becoming a hugger. <laughs> right, right. And you always hug a tree. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's alive too. Yeah, it there is. You, go. you know, a lot of us don't see it that way, but yeah. it is. It has its yeah. own, you know, uh, yeah. authenticity to itself. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things in, in doing, you know, the book, yeah. um, we've been enjoying uh, getting the word out in schools and. And readings and everything, and the book, mm -hmm. you know, while it's about self-awareness and self-discovery and mm -hmm. all those things that come with her her um, exploration and trying to find these, find something that's outside of her that we, that's really inside mm -hmm. of her. Mm -hmm. um, I said, Shauna, let's, how can we create a game to play after readings? Because kids always want to play a game, mm -hmm. and they're going to read the book, but that takes 10 minutes. Actually, it takes us 20 mm -hmm. because she reads it with me. So yeah. it takes a little bit of time, but um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's her book, so mm -hmm. I go with it. Yeah. But we, uh, we uh, decided on a game called the Hug Store Game that we made up these little uh, different color wristbands. Beautiful. So tell us about this game. And it's... Basically, it's a game about integration mm -hmm. and uh, the power of touch. Mm -hmm. And when when kids, and we've roughly been doing this with kids about five to seven years mm -hmm. old, at first they're a little taken back and they're not so sure about it. But every child gets a you know a different color wristband, and mm -hmm. there's only you know a certain number uh, for how many total kids there are, mm -hmm. and they don't know why they have the color that they have, but they have to take whatever. They can't you know, swap it out for a different mm -hmm. color. Mm -hmm. And then we start the game, we'll say like, you know, purple hugs orange, green hugs blue, mm -hmm. and they have to go hug the color wristband, not the person they want to hug or their friend or somebody that they're trying to avoid, mm -hmm. but they're going to find these colors. And in doing it, they're discovering other people that they may have not talked to or ever thought about talking with and let alone they're hugging here and it's like lowering their inhibitions and after we swap colors and we do it two or three times and then the kids don't want to stop they just want to keep playing the game because at that point they've hugged everybody and it's this kind of unified field so it's become this real fun game to do with them after reading the book that's fantastic. We do, we need to have you at Curtis School. <laughs> you, Can't wait. We, yeah. So 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 you bring this game into the classroom, and it encourages children to have more connection to to be able to go beyond sort of their comfort zone. Maybe right. they're not playing with a friend or they're avoiding a friend because of whatever you know. And so this is that icebreaker. It's the touch, the connection right. that helps them know. Oh, like you're human too, and we're. Like there's We're this one. kinship. We're right. one. And, it's, and, it, and, it, and at the same time, it stretches us mm -hmm. to realize that we're stuck within our comfort zones. Mm -hmm. So you, again, you know, it mirrors what we're seeing in the children. Mm -hmm. And here, you know, is a, a great way for us to visualize, well, what can we do to stretch ourselves mm -hmm. a little bit mm -hmm. to, to pull <laughs> us in another direction that's going to give us, you know, ultimately more comfort, but will make us, you know, living on the edge to get to that yeah, comfort yeah, place. Yeah. Um, and that's why this book and the whole movement of, of the power of touch and really of conscious living, mm -hmm. really under the umbrella of that, is, is where you know, the hug store emanates from mm -hmm. too. Because it's, it, you know, Shauna always wanted to, I mean, ever since we had a great, um, you know, when, when she was born, you know, that, that 
um, skin to skin moment sure. that's so important mm -hmm. for the mom. Mm -hmm. Well, our doctor was, it's really important for the dad too. Mm -hmm. So I think within about three minutes, I had her, mm -hmm. you know, on my bare chest, mm -hmm. which is probably a little itchy for her. Mm -hmm. But um, <laughs> she, she was, but you know, it was that that's we beautiful. we were we were connected yeah. though that way right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And I like the, you know, explanation too, um, between father and daughter yes. and bringing more men into the world of, of touch. You Amen. Know, we, oh my goodness. Wow. That is just so powerful. So, um, برای شما دوستان که با ما هستین در رابطه با کانکشن و رابطه ای که بین پدر و دختر یا پدر و فرزند هستش آقای ریک موریسن صحبت میکنن میگن در اون دهزات اول که دخترشون شانا به دنیا اومده بوده دکتر پزشک به صلاح متخصص زنان ایشون بر این باور بودن که کانکشن یا رابطه ای که کودک با پدر در اون لحظات اول در اون لحظات اول تولد داره به همون به صلاح مهم و پر اهمیت هستش که با مادر داره بنابراین شانه رو در آغوش ایشون میذارن بعد از مادر که ایشون اون سکین تو سکین یا پوست شانا به پوست ایشون و در آغوششون باشه اینجا در اتچمنت theories یا اون اتچمنت پرنتینگ اهمیت این که در اون دهزات اول کودک رو روی بدن بذارن و بتونه کودک لمس بکنه این رو بهش خیلی توجه میشه برای همین از اون ابتدا ایشون این کانشسنس رو این اوورنس رو این آگاهی و خداگاهی رو داشتند که بدونن اون رابطه و کنکشن رو با دخترشون شانا حفظ بکنن در آغاز در تولد و این کنکشن ادامه پیدا کرده تا اون جایی که با هم دیگه یک کتاب نوشتن این کتاب بسیار زیبا میتونه این قصه ایشون قصه شما باشه اگر شما این رابطه نزدیک رو با فرزندتون دارین میتونین با هم در روی یک به صلاح کانسپت یه چیزی که برای او فرزند شما مهمه یک همچین قصه ای رو بنویسین و حالا چاپش هم نکنین مهم نیست میتونین این قصه رو استفاده بکنین در خانواده در رابطه با انتگریشن و ویل بینگ چون هرچی بیشتر شما انتگریت میکنین انتگریشن به شما ویلنس میده در کنار این کتاب بسیار خوب ایشون یه بازی رو به سلا با شانا اختراع کردن که این بازی بسیار جالبه از این به سلا ریسپندایی که هممون میگیریم برای کازای مختلف از این ریسپندا که uh, The Hug Store uh, روش هستش uh, با رنگای مختلف uh, تولید کردن اینا رو شما یک کیسه رو میگیرین uh, که رنگاش مثل uh, رنگین کمان رنگای متفاوتی هستش بعد اگر میهمانی دارین uh, at a special event social event I'm even thinking heck like fundraisers and all these galas school galas right have these make it fun it's interactive it's connectional به هم دیگه رنگای مختلف میدین بعد یه کسی اعلام میکنه که حالا صورتی مثلا سبز رو در آغوشش بگیره <laughs> what are characteristics of a, a, a good hug uh, you know, a nice, nice, you know, juicy I, hug. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, there's all the research out yeah. on there, but I think, you know, outside of the research, I think it's whatever feels right mm -hmm. and, and authentic to you. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the research points to, you know, four to eight seconds mm -hmm. of real embrace and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and getting in there and not kind of like the, the boundary hug where it's like a little icky because there's all that air and space in mm -hmm. between. Mm -hmm. It's got to be, you know, mm -hmm. it's got to be an embrace where those, you know, great uh, tonic chemicals come out mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, help to heal. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know, hugs, it, 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 you know, it's, there's something that, it, it doesn't take any time. It, it's, it's, you know, it'd be great if we just all hugged, you know, as a way to say hello. Uh, realize that's a little outside how things are in the West, but, mm -hmm. you know, I think more and more people are hugging. You always see guys hugging on the football field. You know, so they're, they're, everyone's capable of hugging. We just have to do it more. Um, you know, other great things that I think, um, you know, being sensitive to when somebody doesn't want to be hugged too, because there can be the right moment when, you know, somebody needs a little bit of space. 
-hmm. you know, like Gran like um, like Shauna did. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just because Grandpa was on his timetable for a hug, mm -hmm. if it doesn't line up, it doesn't line up. It, but when it does, it's magical, and then maybe the next time it'll line up because it was magical the prior time. Mm. So I think it's, you know, it's listening to our, our so, inner so voice. So you are the hug store for, for you or for Sean. Yeah, for we know where our hug you store are is. The, you know where the hug store is. We, we, you know. So you can ask your child or um, mm. um, can we integrate say that? this. Yes, Can yes. we say the last part of the book? Sure, sure. All right. Go for it. So the, the last line in the book, mm -hmm. after Shauna is shopping, mm -hmm. In shopping and shopping and shopping, um, she finds her hug store and she finds it on her own. Mm -hmm. But the last line is, and as she reads to the children out there, by the way, this would be the, <laughs> the shirt that inspired the book. And if Shauna was here, she'd be wearing this shirt. Um, cool. But she will ask everybody, do you know where your hug store is? And everyone really has to ask themselves and go within. You know, be still and ask them, do you know where your hug store is? I love it. You know, because it's, it, it's in there. Yeah. You just have to yeah. un uncover it. But there is a hug store. You just need to locate it. <laughs> right. And you are. <laughs> like you are the universe, right? You are the hug store. Um, yeah, I see the shirt. See if you look on the cover. Yes. There's her shirt. That was, yes. and, and I didn't realize that would actually be in there, but when we sent our illustrator, who we adore, and yeah. we had a, a long wait to, to mm -hmm. work with this illustrator, mm -hmm. but I'm so glad we were patient, and we did. And mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, for a four-year-old to have patience, you know, we'd get an illustration once every, like, two or three months, and, you know, she was asking me every two or three days sometimes, <laughs> when it's gonna, when's the new illustration going to be here? But, you know, she's so creative. She's far ahead of where I'm at with this. She's like, Daddy, we should make a... Because she would get all the line drawings mm -hmm. and before they would ever go to color, and she's like, we should make a coloring book out of the line drawings. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have to create some sort of demand that people actually know about the book before the coloring book, but she's already on to that, that phase. That's she fantastic. wants to create a coloring book and, and, uh, and color, and that way people can have their own version of the book and children. She's already an entrepreneur and creative and warm <laughs> and loving and a soul leader. Wow. And how old is she now? Uh, a little, uh, almost six and a half. Six and a half. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to have her on Mom Talk. <laughs> yes, I can't I wait. Love I would love her. to bring her back. I would love to have her. Okay, so um, where are you headed with this? I, I, we were having some conversation about mm -hmm. going to schools and um, maybe mm -hmm. starting schools that focus on social emotional intelligence and empathy and connection yeah i mean goals? well the schools are are, are kind of the, the low hanging fruit it's mm -hmm. where you know especially when you have principals that, that see the value in it that are that want to bring us in and see the connections that could be made because of it mm -hmm. uh, but you know we're going to take it further than that um start something called the hug consortium it'll be a, a group of like-minded mm -hmm. Um, you know, everything from, from the mom bloggers and sites to, uh, you know, conscious businesses yeah. that really, um, especially on the retail side, when we're such a consumerism driven society mm -hmm. that, um, you know, you can return anything nowadays and they give you, you know, 90 days in any store like a Nordstrom or whatever takes back anything. Mm -hmm. You know, stores could have far less returns if people made conscious decisions about what they actually need. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that comes from, you know, knowing themselves. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, this, this book is an exploration into how we as people can just be more self-aware mm -hmm. of, of, you know, of, of shopping mm -hmm. and do things that are going to get the word out about hugging and the power of touch, but also of just being, becoming more conscious human beings mm -hmm. and how we can, you know, help better our planet mm. in so many different ways so Fantastic. I have a, a long list of things yeah, <laughs> I, I could hear like conservation conservation yeah. conservation <laughs> that's one of my C's and peace learning so uh, this is yeah. so uh, fantastic you, you're raising awareness on multiple levels you know it's not just compassion but it's conservation yeah. it's communication it's how you collaborate this is modeling a yeah. collaborative effort and relationship and uh, a loving relationship that leads to this uh, very powerful story. 
بنابراین اگر که شما علاقه دارین با ریک مورسن و خانواده ایشون شانا دختر ایشون در تماس باشین با فیسبوک پیج ایشون یا فیسبوک پیج The Hug Store تماس بگیرین و من فکر میکنم این کنکشن از اون کنکشن هایی که اگر لایک like مایندد هستین اگر مثل ما فکر میکنین کانشس پرنتینگ براتون مهمه سوشال ایموشنال انتلیجنس رو بهش ولیو میدین و میگین که در به صلاح آوردن صلح بیشتر یا دانش برای صلح بیشتر یا دانایی و توانایی بیشتر در رابطه با صلح و صلح پروری بذارین که توجهمون رو بذاریم روی این کارهایی که واقعا مهمه و اهمیت بذاریم و ارزش قائل باشیم و خب این مسلما از اون کارایی هستش که خیلی از کسانی که من خیلی علاقه دارم دکتر شفالی اندورس کردن و گفتن که um, uh, an elegant and articulate reminder of how life's greatest gifts can never be uh, bought and are instead always found deep within us بنابراین در درون شما در اندرون شما اون دانش و اون آرامش و اون صفایی که نهفته هیچ جا نمیتونین پیداش بکنین تو هیچ دپارتمنت استوری نه نورستروم نه نیمن مارکس نه شانل نیستش برین به هاگ استور و با بچه ها برین به هاگ استور برای اینکه اونا احتیاج دارن که این رو بیاموزن و بدونن که بله این واقعیت مثلا زندگی در رابطه با um, it's um, finding your hug store within you and what right. a great way what a great example what a nice way to articulate integrate and bring this to families millions of families around the world yeah and and, and have those families hug the moment mm-hmm. too that's kind of become a moniker that we've uh, been using because if you're in the present moment You're, you're able to, one, be conscious to hug, mm-hmm. but also, you know, not letting that, that present moment go because that's all we're ever here. You know, yeah. we're actually living in that. And, you know, if, uh, if hugs are part of it, it's just going to be so much more dynamic and bring people together. And, mm-hmm. and you know, we're here to be happy. Mm-hmm. We really are. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world where, um, especially post-election things here right. in the U.S. Um, where uh, I think, you know, the power of hugs has never been more needed. Uh, you know, it, it, it dissolves separation, really, at the essence of it, and that's where the beauty lies. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, having the younger generation learn and be, you know, grow up as huggers yeah. um, just makes it better for the future for everybody. Yeah. You know, it, I always like um, one of our endorsers, uh, Michael Beckwith, it mm-hmm. always says that it takes... Uh, you know, a, a village to raise a child, but it takes a child to raise a village. Mm-hmm. And that's what Shauna is doing in this movement. She's really raising the awareness that, that this village of, mm-hmm. of grown-ups, yeah. you know, that we can bring to it. And, and it's powerful. So, you know, she's uh, by far my greatest guide. Oh, that's yeah. beautiful. And that's a conscious parenting moment. Like, I could totally, I get what you're saying yeah. so deep in my heart. It's just... So wonderful, and I'm just really enjoying it. Yeah, thank I'm you. I'm so glad, Nelly. Thank you thank for you. your presence, your being, and bringing so much well-being to here, Mom Talk, as well as those who are watching. So this is a great uh, gift that Rick is giving you all. Take it in, you know, think about it, and it's it's beautiful. All right, so conscious parenting. Uh, when did that come about and how? It sounds like from, from birth, uh, from yeah. what you're telling me. <laughs> but it's dynamic yeah. and yeah. it's always yeah. evolving. Yeah. Um, but yeah, sure. I, I mean, I, I think that um, I was pretty in tune as, as a conscious parent and um, I made some choices in, in careers to be even more um, you know, uh, conscious and wanting to be, um, you know, uh, with my own, inner work that I do makes me a better parent. And, and that is my greatest gift that I can, you know, give to my daughter is, is to, so she can lead her most authentic life and be, you know, have her sovereignty and be completely present with who she is. And if I did that, you know, I feel that that's my greatest gift. But um, a lot of it, I think for me was um, Dr. Shafali's, I think it was her second book, The Conscious Parent, 
that really opened my eyes up to um, it's really it, it's it's not that the kids are that are being bad or misbehaving. It's our uh, projections of what we have that we didn't deal with mm -hmm. as uh, as kids or, or for whatever reason, and that you know our parents did the best that they could. And you know, I, I uh, my parents did the best they could. I forgive them for what they might not have done, but they did the best they could with that time, and we're doing the same thing with our mm -hmm. children. And just being more aware of what you know what they need, because if they're going to be able to to fully evolve, they have to be really authentic to who they are, not all the projections that we we put on them as a society, which is just so many. I mean, in terms of like academics and you know um, you know extracurricular activities and my daughter is karate right now and there's always that you know how do I get to the next level it's like well you know part of the enjoyment is the journey and we always forget that the kids though mm -hmm. you know you give them the the you know my daughter's got all these great toys and gifts but you give her a cardboard box she's super creative and she'll come up with a million ways to use that box mm -hmm. and you know in their creativity is really where their authenticity is mm -hmm. so just trying to be present to that and the conscious you know parent movement is an amazing thing because it's making us all look within ourselves mm -hmm. and uh, which ultimately will make us better parents yeah I, I personally have enjoyed that process the most yes and um, it's that awareness when you, you pretty much shift your focus. And I, too, had that intuitive uh, sort of leaning towards, mm -hmm. you know, this, this style. Um, uh, but uh, I think the awareness for me came about when um, I had like one of those aha moments when we were in the room with my mom and, you know, um, my extended family. And I just, I, I just took a moment to pause. Like I, it was almost like I left that conversation and was the observer and was just listening. And then I started hearing all these messages about, you know, um, uh, you know, the kid needs this or that. And it was just an aha moment where I re realized, you know, in that moment, um, the family was uh, not present. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and that uh, lack of presence um, uh, was sad to me. You know, it was a sad realization. And then it was really weird because I started having like a you know going back like rewinding my life and and just making all the connections and realizing that oh my gosh like there's an intergenerational connection to this all and you know there's a col cultural uh, heritage like uh, you know so. And this all happened very fast, you very, know, very fast. Right. And like, it, so there was an awakening then. Um, and then, of course, along the way, uh, meeting Dr. Shefali and, you know, just connecting and being with other parents who are conscious and have that um, gift, I think, has helped me in this evolution and you know, yeah. this movement. Yeah. And, and, you know, with young adults and those, you know, preteen kids mm -hmm. who are kind of glued to their devices, mm -hmm. that's, you know, obviously a huge issue. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, getting to the kids right now in this three to eight category, mm -hmm. hopefully will, you know, is they get, I mean, the electronics aren't going to go away, yeah. but there'll be a certain, you know, mindfulness that they can bring to them that there's more than just that. Mm. And, you know, to be present to it because, you know, as, as families now, there was a little, it didn't look unlike our family in the hug store, mm -hmm. but you put devices in everybody's hands and then look what, then it's even more, you know, separated and di yeah. disconnected. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. it, you know, those are, but it takes work, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, it really takes work and you have to make a commitment. But the good news about doing the work is once you start doing it, mm -hmm. um, two things happen. It gets easier because you don't have to think about doing it right. because you're enjoying it. They kind of work in tandem mm -hmm. and then you just want to be more present. And, mm -hmm. and I can remember my father reading the newspaper, you know, every night and, you know, it was just like a device. It was something um, and I probably got his attention half the time. I usually used to duck underneath the newspaper, <laughs> and I'd like to show up, 
<laughs> full page ad. <laughs> I love that. You know, but I remember it's like it wasn't any different trying to get his attention than kids probably trying to get our attention. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So we just have to be attentive to them. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And if you um, allow children, which today I believe a lot of us parents, uh, whether you're conscious of conscious parent or practicing conscious parenting or not. Um, are more responsive to children's needs. I feel like this whole movement, this um, evolution or revolution um, has happened because um, it was not sustainable. I think too much uh, focus or too much um, attention was given to uh, the older, the parents, you know, it was more about the parents' needs or the, in our culture, um, the, the sort of the per Persian heritage, there's this emphasis on the elderly or having respect or really focusing on sort of it's a top-down, you know, hierarchy, hierarchical system. Um, and I think some way along the way, you know, that next generation um, pushed for the parents, like you, you know, coming out of the newspaper yeah. and saying, you know, I, I, you need to see me, you know, you have to see me, it's not okay, you know, this is not going to work. And so that generation kind of paved the way. I think that was um, the generation, the us generation or, you know, the previous generation who um, intentionally uh, wanted to um, mutate or have some sort of a corrective experience so that the evolution will be back on track. And now I, I feel like we are as parents, at least, you know, where I am or the like-minded community that yeah. I'm connected to. Many parents get it, they value it, and it's important. Yeah, and yeah. the one thing I think some parents that if they're just starting to explore conscious parenting mm -hmm. and what it does, it, it, you know, it's not us figuring it out for our kids, it's just us hearing our kids because they can really figure it out on their own, but right. sometimes they just need that that like little little touch to guide them there, and then they can you know figure it out. Um, mm -hmm. Because you know, hearing every need, you know, a lot of people the first thing it's like, oh my God, they're going to be nagging me for everything, mm -hmm. and I have to pay attention to everything, and you don't. But usually, like the one nagging thing is because of the last ten things that you weren't paying attention to. So right on, yeah. right. If yep. you just yep. if you just do yep. one, you kind of set them up that you know they're going to be on their trajectory for an hour or two yeah. until you know. So and, and it doesn't mean that you um, go to the rescue and you right. provide that need. It's just mm -hmm. listening. It's that compassionate listening when you take time. And you're also listening for what that communication means about your relationship. It's about the relationship. So you just take a moment, pause, connect. Uh, mindfulness that Robert Boyin has to show peace learning that Robert Boyin has to show you can be in a moment or a moment داشته باشین مهیا بکنین که حضور داشته باشین حضور ذهن حضور داشته باشین و ببینین فرزندتون رو و اون که او هست و اون که اوست و این دیدن برای شما بسیار آرامش عشق و کانکشن میاره و اینتگریشن میاره Well, um, it's been such a pleasure, Rick, to have you. And Bruz, Bruz, a besiar, besiar, khubi bud baray man. The hug store, hatman berin re Facebook page, the hug store, va baray Morrison dar tamos boshin. To hafte ayande ruz ruzgar khosh va khoda negahtar. Thank you, Nelly. Thank you. Be a hug. Oh.